In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look at a huge surge of warm temperatures, but not only that, massive amounts of humidity also working its way into a lot of the central and eastern states. And as a result of this, we're going to be seeing overall a very active stormy pattern that comes in the form of thunderstorms, but also some severe, big severe weather threats in there as well. So we're going to track the whole upcoming pattern today. First off, I wanted to show you a map. We don't really usually break out, you know, maps like this, but this is our upper level relative humidity, basically. And this is what I've been talking about for a couple of days, but we are going to see a flow uh, not only from the Gulf up into the eastern and central states, but also a lot of this equatorial Pacific moisture is working its way in as well uh, right there. So let's watch this play out. This is today. But as we move on, we see this massive amount of moisture sticks around for the east we do dry up a little bit here as we get a cold front around saturday but watch this you see this pocket here uh right to the west of mexico there in the pacific ocean and that's just going to get just basically thrown into the central and eastern states and this is why we're dealing with such high moisture levels in our atmosphere here in these areas throughout the upcoming pattern for the most part uh, it's all just getting thrown in from that Pacific stream, but also from the Gulf. And at most times, both are playing a role in that. Uh, and that really sticks around. We see these cold fronts where things dry up, but we get the moisture right back, uh, especially if you're further south. So let's go ahead and move on to look at some of our storms. I just wanted to show you guys that. I thought that was very interesting. And it kind of puts it on screen exactly what I've been talking about. So it helps to clarify that. For the afternoon today, we do have some isolated thunderstorms around. We have plenty of special weather statements, severe thunderstorm warnings out there, especially uh, in deeper south areas, basically from Texas and Oklahoma eastward through into even the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida. We do have some showery activity to the north up here uh, for areas nearby the Rockies and severe weather overall expected throughout the plains and upper Midwest. As we just keep on moving on, we're going to take this to Friday on um, April 25th here. Uh, and what we see is that a lot of this overall activity is on the move eastward. So we continue to see these lines of thunderstorms in here taking place throughout the eastern states. I'm going to take us towards Saturday. And this is when we really see it come in the form of a cold front. We see this low up here over New England stretching cold front. And when we look at the jet stream, we can see it's dipping in behind that cold front, indicating that cold, cold, dry air is, for the most part, moving in pretty rapidly with this system. But really, right behind it, we have more thunderstorm activity sparking up for the plains, some of the Rockies, and probably some of the Midwest as well. We've been talking about this a lot, how this area in particular is going to just be seeing daily, daily precipitation, mostly in the form of thunderstorms and highly above average precipitation overall. When we look at Sunday on the 27th, what we end up seeing is a little bit of a cooler pattern along the west, a ridge in the central states. This will bring plenty of warmth and then a trough there in the east once again. So probably the coolest day that is upcoming for the east will be this Sunday, the 27th, maybe even extending into Monday on the 28th. Here, where we do get a pretty major low here between the Dakotas and Minnesota. So some showery activity up there. Heavy rainfall in spots as well. Uh, but by Tuesday, we see that this is going to be something pretty substantial. We get this low here. Cold front developed underneath. So severe weather once again. And it could be quite major underneath that low as we reach towards the midpoint of next week. Looking at Wednesday there on the 30th, we continue to see this thunderstorm and severe weather activity. And then even as we take this towards Thursday on the 1st, something interesting happens. Our parent low moves out. So that one is basically done. The cold front that gets left behind develops a low here. And we almost pick up the same dynamics. We have a cold front underneath, warm front trying to form there to the east. And we end up with a sector of pretty bad thunderstorms potentially and showery activity up here to the north uh, for Thursday on May 1st. By Friday, May 2nd, what we're dealing with is a stronger low over New England, a stronger cold front behind it, and even more intense cold air. So I'm correcting myself now. This is even colder than what we saw the weekend prior. Uh, moving into the east, and it's likely coming as a result of this very, very strong positive PNA look out west 
Uh, and all you need to know about that is it means warm in the West and nine times out of 10, it's going to force the cold air and activity, like in this case, into the Eastern states. So we see that by Friday, May 2nd. Saturday here on the 3rd, we see a lot of that over the eastern states, that cold air diving southward for Sunday, May 4th there. Uh, but that does move out fairly quickly for Tuesday the 6th. Still, we're warmer in the west here by this point than we are in the east, but we're seeing a more neutral jet stream there. So there is some warmth in the south. There is some cold in the north, and they're kind of hashing it out. They're battling it out between uh, that boundary in between and that's what's leading to a lot of what you can see in here which is just a ton of thunderstorm activity sparking up due to that battle between those two air masses and by the time we're looking at wednesday here on the 7th we do see plenty of thunderstorms along the deeper south along the eastern seaboard even for areas like the upper midwest and northern plains we are seeing thunderstorm activity by thursday on the 8th it's a lot of the same it's a little bit more scattered about and it's a little less widespread but we are continuing to see that same type of activity and by friday the 9th we are cooler in the east but again quite stormy for some spots of the central and eastern states now as we take a look at the total precipitation during that entire model run uh, we do see pretty active in the east compared to the west uh the main area of concern for drought is going to be this southeast area where there is already quite a bit of a drought in some of these areas and according to this model, it doesn't look to get any better between now and May 9th. Now, the difficult thing is that it is much harder to recover from a drought over the summertime. The hot temperatures uh, evaporates that moisture really quickly, so it's harder for it to soak in. Typically, we deal with more isolated and scattered rainfall events as opposed to more widespread heavy rainfall events. So those are all the reasons why summertime is not a good time to be hoping for a drought to come to an end at all usually spring fall and winter are, are going to be much more superior uh there is still hope we still have some time here before the summer hits and even the summer could bring about you know some relief but uh definitely was hoping to see this getting a, a lot better over the course of april and into early may but that is not looking like it's going to be the case the anomalies here above average for much of the central and northeastern states, below average for most, most of the west, and then again below average for the southeast corridor there as well. Looking at the Storm Prediction Center outlooks here, here's the day one outlook for today on Thursday the 24th, and we do have a very large general thunderstorm risk area as well as a smaller one for Oregon and northern California. These lighter green areas is where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so heed every watch, warning, and advisory. The darker green pocket there for a lot of the plains is going to be your level one marginal risk where we expect some isolated severe weather to occur. The two yellow areas there as well are going to be your level two slight risk where we expect some more scattered about severe weather to occur. And then your orange area over the panhandle of Texas is your level three enhanced risk where we do expect things to get a little bit more widespread. Day two here for Friday the 25th tomorrow we have a very very large general thunderstorm risk area and then a decent marginal risk area for New Mexico Texas and Oklahoma day three here which will be for Saturday the 26th is the same thing two general thunderstorm risk areas and then a marginal risk region as well looking at the extended day outlooks we have to move to day five here Monday the 28th where we do have just like in yesterday's video, the 15% chance area of severe weather in the yellow, which translates slight, uh, pretty much to a slight risk. But we now have that orange area, which is the highest risk that they even issue in these long-range outlooks. And that roughly translates to at least an enhanced risk for Iowa and surrounding states. So maybe some bad severe weather, well, almost definitely bad severe weather expected for Monday on April 28th. The day following... We expect roughly a slight risk, maybe even more here from basically northern Texas up into parts of the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and Great Lakes here. Again, roughly a slight risk could be even higher is what's currently expected. Now, we're doing something new. We're going to try looking at these outlooks here at the end of the video as opposed to the beginning, just since we show them every single day. I don't want the beginning of every single video to be exactly the same. I'd rather put these towards the end just for that reason so we can have a little bit of a unique start to every video. So here we go. Six to 10 day outlook here from the National Weather Service. This is going to be from April 30th through May 4th. And we can see warmer temperatures expected 
for a lot of the northwest and southeast with near normal to below normal conditions expected from the Great Lakes to the northeast and then some regions of the south central states. Looking at the precipitation, uh, the north is a little drier. Surprisingly, they show the entire south and even up the east coast being above average, even the southeast area. So hopefully this is right and the European model is wrong. Time will tell, of course. 8 to 14 day temperature outlook. A lot of this warmth does shift towards the northwest and really the west overall. We still see a warmer look in the east. It's just not quite as warm. And then we do have below normal temperatures expected for the south central states. Looking at the precipitation during this time frame, it does shift, but it is similar. We see the northern plains, upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Midwest, Ohio Valley, and parts of the interior mid-Atlantic and northeast seeing below normal precipitation. But the southwest all the way to the southeast, we do expect above average precipitation from May 2nd through May 8th. Very, very interesting. Finally, the past 20 days here, this is how things have gone. Warmer to the south compared to what is normal for every given location in here for this time of year. So... Of course, the south is warmer and the north is colder, but we're seeing an even more dramatic difference between the north and the south here is what this is indicating. So that is what we've seen for the past 20 days, basically April 4th through April 24th. With all that being said, we upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.